than a wicked and hip hop. Bad, bad, and a wicked and Um, okay, so today's lecture is going to be uh, about database storage part one. This is the first of a uh, two-part lecture. Um, just before we get going, uh, a few housekeeping things. Um, so homework one is going to be due on Sunday, September 12th at 11.59 p.m. Project number zero is also due Sunday, September 12th at 11.59 p.m. Uh, and project number one will be released uh, the following day, Monday, September 13th. Um, a few other things, unfortunately, uh, uh, you may have noticed DJ Mushu couldn't be here with us today. Um, he's actually out on the West Coast uh, in LA. I don't, I don't wanna get too much into details about it. Um, he has this like long-standing beef with a, a crew out there, so he's trying to get that wrapped up and uh, he should be back in class on Monday. Um, the, the other thing, uh, the office hours should be finalized uh, now on the website. Um, a few of them have switched to, to Zoom only, so you have uh, a more uh, remote only options if, if uh, you'd prefer. Um, and we also created a Google Calendar, uh, which is now posted on Piazza, um, that shows uh, office hours, deadlines, those sorts of things. Okay, so that's, that's all the uh, housekeeping stuff. Are there any questions about anything related to that before we get started with the material? Great. Okay, so just kind of a, a high level recap, uh, an overview of what we've talked about so far. Um, mostly we've been focused on the high level or application level side of things. Um, topics like the relational model, SQL query languages, how um, the, an application or an end user would interact with the DBMS. Uh, so kind of now our focus is going to shift for uh, the rest of the, the semester about how to build the software that actually manages the database, so how to build a database management system and kind of go through all the different uh, layers of that. So uh, I showed a slide that was similar to this uh, in the very first lecture um, and kind of it, it breaks down the different high level pieces that we're going to cover in the course. So we've already kind of talked about the, the high level idea of relational databases uh, and query languages and now we're going to, to dive down into each, each layer of the, the system. So starting with storage, um, working up to query execution, Concurrency control, so if you have concurrent um, transactions or queries that are executing, how do you, how do you manage that? Recovery, uh, if your system crashes, how do you, how do you recover from a failure? Uh, and then some more advanced topics at the end. But, so, th so that's kind of the high level outline. The other way that you can think about it uh, is sort of this um, uh, software stack diagram that's, that's shown on the other side of the slide where uh, kind of the, the base layer is uh, the disk manager and we build uh, additional layers on top of it. So each one of these um, uh, blue boxes corresponds roughly to a self-contained part of the system. So each one of these um, uh, boxes represents kind of a, an abstraction that each uh, upper level in the stack can kind of call on and interact with doesn't need to worry about the implementation, implementation details of the layers below it, but it can still have some kind of uh, API where it gets what it needs from those layers. So uh, not everything is you know, perfectly clean cut. They're not all, sometimes certain layers will need to um, interact with each other or know what's going on at a finer grain level. But uh, in general, the, the system is designed to be modular such that you can build these layers one on top of the other and you don't have to know necessarily low-level details um, of the underlying layers. So the, the uh, topic of, of this lecture and the, the next lecture um, is going to be specifically the disk manager component that manages uh, how the system is going to interact with the underlying uh, file system. So kind of the, the, the uh, the whole premise of this course is going to focus on uh, what we refer to as a disk-based 
DBMS architecture. And what that means is that the, the DBMS is going to assume that the uh, primary storage location for all of the data in the database uh, is on some non-volatile secondary storage. So you have some persistent storage medium like uh, disk or SSD or, or something like that. And uh, the DBMS assumes that all of your data lives um, uh, on that storage medium. Uh, so the, the, the components are going to uh, manage specifically the movement of the data, the database files, to and from whatever your secondary persistent storage is. So the DBMS is going to handle reading from and writing to uh, the underlying disk. So it's, it's helpful to think about kind of the, uh, at a high level, how the storage hierarchy in, in a system works. So kind of starting at the top, you can get all the way up to like the CPU and at the very bottom is the uh, kind of lowest form of uh, storage. And it's, it's helpful to think about kind of the trade-offs that you get with each, each one of these layers in the hierarchy. So at the top, again, on the CPU side, um, it's much faster to access data uh, if it's in CPU registers or CPU caches, but uh, the available space that you have to store data is a lot smaller and it's, it's much more expensive per you know, byte of, of data that you store. And as you go all the way down to the lowest layers, uh, it becomes much slower to access data, uh, but you have a lot more space and it's, it's cheaper per byte. So the, the important distinction that, that we're going to make um, in the course is between volatile and non-volatile storage. So uh, volatile storage, um, you typically can access data uh, uh, randomly and it's byte addressable, but the problem is that uh, if if the, you remove the power source, so if you uh, trip on the plug and it gets unplugged, or you know the, the power goes out, or uh, for, for whatever reason um, the, the system crashes, you're going to lose all of the data that you have sitting in, in your volatile storage. On the other side of the line is uh, non-volatile storage, um, which is typically block addressable, so you can't uh, necessarily access an individual uh, byte. You can get a, a rather a block of data, a block of, of um, a, a range of bytes. Um, but the, the, the benefit is that uh, if the power goes out, all your data is safe. So power can go away fully, plug it back in, and um, all, all the data is there. So um, kind of uh, this, this uh, split here is, is the important part um, we're going to care about for for uh, correctness guarantees in our system. So anytime that we talk about uh, DRAM, uh, we're just going to refer to it as memory in the course, and anytime we talk about any kind of disk or persistent storage, it's anything that's uh, non-volatile. So it could be SSD, it could be a traditional hard disk, uh, it could be some kind of network storage, uh, whether that's like a distributed file system like HDFS or, um, if you're on the cloud, maybe like Amazon S3, just something um, where you have network accessible storage. So kind of just memory is volatile and disk is a, a non-volatile storage. And then there's also um, some, as I mentioned, higher level CPU storage, um, but for the purposes of this course, uh, we're not really gonna be concerned with that. So this is kind of the, the traditional hierarchy. Um, there are other uh, uh, storage modalities. So, for example, if you have fast network storage, um, we're not really going to be too concerned with that. Uh, there's this other layer um, that kind of sits in between uh, uh, DRAM and what, what uh, you would consider persistent storage, called non volatile memory. Um, the, the marketing people decided it would be better to be called uh, persistent memory, so you might see that now. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting because it, it gives you a lot of the same properties as uh, traditional DRAM, but if you uh, remove the power, it retains uh, the data. So there are some trade-offs. Uh, it's more, more uh, expensive than some other forms of um, persistent storage. Um, 
and it's, it's slower than just a regular DRAM, but it gives you the byte uh, accessibility and also you don't have to worry about losing your um, uh, data. So uh, Andy actually, uh, and, and his uh, first PhD student, Joy, actually wrote a book um, about non-volatile memory database management systems, kind of uh, how to redesign the stack um, to, to uh, benefit or best leverage from uh, non-volatile memory. Um, and there are in increasing numbers of products being released. Um, this, this one's from Intel. Uh, for a long time, uh, there was this sort of uh, uh, constant promise of um, non-volatile memory out there. Uh, it, 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 the the, the uh, marketing people always said it was coming soon, um, but uh, soon never really came. So. It's kind of been in this perpetual limbo, but uh, more and more products are starting to come out. And maybe, I don't know, within the next 10 years or something, it, it might become more commonplace. But um, for now, we're not going to worry about it because um, you know, it's, it's not um, common in, in typical uh, deployments. So another way to think about kind of the storage hierarchy is to consider the access times for each uh, layer in the stack. So at the top, uh, you have the, the CPU caches, and those take like I, on the order of nanoseconds. Um, and on the very, very bottom uh, is, is tape archives, which is like a, that's a billion nanoseconds. So uh, these numbers are, are kind of uh, difficult for uh, you know, humans to wrap their heads around. So if we convert it to a, a little bit easier time scale, um, if you think about it, normalize it to like seconds. Uh, on the top, reading from the CPU cache is like half a second. Um, and on the very bottom, if you want to read from tape, that's going to take you like 31, 32 years. So um, this kind of storage hierarchy is going to be important because as designers of the DBMS, uh, it's important for us to consider the access latencies to uh, the, the, the different levels uh, of the storage hierarchy where data can live in the system. So maybe another, another uh, helpful way to think about it um, from a, a famous database researcher, Jim Gray, um, he, his, his analogy was uh, in terms of like, if you want to read a page from a book right in front of you, that's like uh, accessing at the, the highest uh, layers in the, the hierarchy. Um, going to disk is equivalent um, to going to like Pluto. And then if you want to read from tape, that's like going to you know, a, a different galaxy altogether. Um, so again, this is going to be really important uh, just to keep in the back of your mind um, when thinking about the, the uh, design decisions in the system. So uh, I also mentioned that um, there's this distinct distinction between sequential versus random access. So um, typically, uh, in in memory, random access is okay. You can you know access a random um, offset in an array, and it's not uh, too bad. Sequential access might be a little more performant, but um, th there's virtually no difference between them. Whereas uh, if you're if you're accessing data stored on a, a traditional um, hard disk, uh, because of the way the uh, um, uh, disk, disk read head has to move to, to access data on different platters, um, it's, it's more beneficial to do sequential access. So the, the DBMS kind of design we'll be focusing on um, is really going to need to consider these access patterns sequential um, versus uh, random. So the, the, the algorithms, a lot of the algorithms we'll look at um, are going to try and, and maximize uh, sequential data access for contiguous um, uh, data blocks at, at all costs. Uh, and kind of the, the allocating multiple pages um, at the same time in, in like a contiguous range um, is referred to as an extent. So kind of the, the design goal um, that, that we're looking at here is to allow uh, the DBMS to manage a database that exceeds the amount of memory available. So this was especially important uh, a long time ago when, when memory was scarcer than it is now. Um, but I, you know, if you have a really large database, you're still running.
Talking about the St. Ives brew, run through a can or two. Share with my crew is magnificent, plus it's mellow. And for the rest of the commercial, I pass the mic on to my no fellow. No need for a mic check, bust it. The fees are set, then grab a 40. The flim New York and snap his neck. St. Ives. Take a sip, then wipe your lips. Cue my 40s getting warm. I'm out, he got the whip. Drink it, drink it, drink it, then I burp. After I slurp, ice cube, I put in much work. With the BMT and the E-Trouble, get us a St. Ives brew on the double. 